Okay, I'm going to cover my portfolio in this one. Just before doing that, let's look at the DXY, just to remind ourselves that it is in a clear uptrend, high highs, higher lows. This ascending has not been breached. Now it's making its way to the 106 zone. A close above 106 takes us way higher, you know, one entire unit higher, 107. And therefore, let's be honest, gold and silver will be under a bit of pressure. They should be, you never know. Market's coming down, maybe the dollar and gold are both safe havens. But so far, despite gold and silver doing quite well in this market drop, they have been green. The miners have gone down. And ultimately, that's the disappointment. But let's just remember where the DXY is. And, you know, for me, it's really a close above 106 or a close below this ascending line, wherever it is on that day. So, I mean, if it was happened to, if it was to happen straight away on Monday, I think a close below 105, maybe even, probably need even more of a lower close to really close below this ascending. But those are the levels I'm watching, this horizontal and this ascending. Now, with that said, I'm not going to look at the markets because I covered that in my other video. Markets are just going down. And to be honest, the miners are following them quite closely. Um, and I think they're, they're due for more downside. I mean, you may have one or two days of bounce, but the bounce should be sold. It's a sell the rip market now, in my opinion. So I'm not going to cover the markets, but let's look at gold and silver straight away. Let's look at gold. So gold does not look like the markets at all. It's actually, you know, it's had a green day, for example, on Friday when the DXY was up. So it won't necessarily go down with the DXY. Um, you know, you, you got to also consider interest rates. Interest rates are moving up with the dollar by and large. But gold is resilient because, you know, the dollar's been going up, 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 up. And gold is not going down, down, down. It's actually, I mean, you could say higher lows and it's, it's stuck in this little pennant here. I mean, I could draw an extra... Uh, I could draw an extra line here just to complete this wedge. But ultimately, it's going to break out one way or another. And it depends, you know, it depends which way it breaks. It depends what the market's doing. I think the markets are going to go lower. I think gold will just go sideways and we have to wait and see what the dollar does. Ultimately, I think the DXY may continue higher. We just want to see gold, you know, gold could break down. I, th You know, it might just do that, but we wanted to see it strong on the drops you know the, the the dips being bought and so that by the time the dxy does reverse gold just just explodes higher silver though look at this you know look at this day here thursday was very very special i mean very strong buying on a day where gold was red so silver is really bucking the trend and again as long as gold and silver can sort of grind sideways up is even better but just sideways whilst the dollar keeps going up imagine when the dollar tops out and just decides to reverse I mean, silver, if, if that was to happen next week straight away, silver would go straight to 25. And then it would look super strong. So I think gold and silver are quite impressive. I think they are very strong, all things considered, the XY strength. But again, let's look at the miners. It's all about the miners. That, unfortunately, is not following the metals. Close at low of day. Pretty much following the markets, not as bad as the market chart. I mean, the local last couple of 20, 30 trading days, you know, the markets are really, they've broken the neckline. Uh, they're going to new lows, the S&P, like, you know, S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, Russell, they're, they're, they're looking pretty bad. But GDX, GDXJ, they're really one day away from just going down to their next level. Close at low of day, just holding the ascending. The GDXJ, you know, pretty much close at low of day, just holding its horizontal low here at 34 so next move down takes us to scary levels where we may start flushing. Now, levels on the way up, you can see GDX is 30. I don't see that returning until we have a very strong move in the metals. But who knows? Maybe there is a change in, in sentiment. Maybe there's a banking crisis which really propels gold and silver higher. And then the miners are forced to follow the metals rather than the markets. Uh, so, and that's what happened last time, right? The, the bank started the crash, the, the markets went down, and then gold and silver went up, and the miners followed the metals, thankfully. So that could happen again. I do actually think the banks will crash. I think there will be some black swan or gray swan, a bank that crashes, takes down the markets, and and then hopefully gold and silver and the miners got with that. So now that we know the weakness in the GDX and GDXJ, we can finally look at the portfolio. So new ones. Now... 
Newmont's my strongest miner, and to be honest, very, very strong relative to the other miners. Uh, look at this chart here, by the way. You know, look at this buy from down here. Very happy to have bought this. I mean, Newmont is just such a buy down here. Um, double bottom broke out the last couple of days. It's been outperforming the sector. And again, even Friday, despite this red candle, it's actually a green day. I mean, we know the miners were red, so it was it was outperforming everything pretty much, all the miners, and it's hitting this descending. So if we do, it's a shame because it's really primed for a continuation of a breakout, but without the miners going up, Newmont's not going to go higher. I mean, you know, it needs the metals and definitely the, the, the entire sector to be green. So... It's unfortunate, but I I think that it's not going to be able to to break out to forty four. That's where it would go naturally if you were to close above this descending forty four, and then forty six. But at the moment, the market's going lower. Who knows if if Monday the markets have a small bounce, then you could have new months starting to to go past forty two, for example. But you know, I'm looking for a more sustained move, and I think the market's going to go lower. So it's all about the miners. You know, can the entire miners sector decide to follow the metals rather than the markets uh, but otherwise newmont very very strong barrett gold that one's following the entire sector look at that close at low of day all the way down here next level this 1550 zone that's where we'll go quite easily if we have any further cons uh, downward movement um this is actually quite weak actually compared to the sector in general so very very bearish candle close at low of day Let's see, 1550 after that. Well, I've got them in 15 or just above $15, then down here at 1406. But remember, New Month actually is trading all the way down at its early November low. So although it's acting relatively strong at the moment, Barrett Gold is uh, nowhere near its November, early November lows. Same for all the others, to be honest. Uh, Gnico Eagle, stronger than Barrett Gold at least. Also looking quite good just on that Wednesday, but look, the sector went down and unfortunately the the rally fades. So let's see, next level 47 after that, it's the 46 zone. So hopefully we can see the sector bounce back up maybe so that we can test the 53 zone. But those are the levels I'm looking at, the Nico Eagle, not the worst candle, especially compared to Barrett Gold. Pan America. Now, that's not the best candle at all, which is a shame. I mean, look at these bearish candles here the last three, four days. Just, you know, it was testing 17, looking so good, so strong. This is with silver going all the way up and then, you know, down we go. So, well, actually, no, wait a minute. That's not with silver going all the way up. Silver's been going up the last couple of days. So, well, it just went all the way back down with the, with the, the miners, unfortunately. So... But look at this close near low of day, pretty much at this 15 to 1520 zone. This should be support. If we go lower, I see 1450-ish, just this ascending. Where does that come from? All the way down here. My goodness, that's some long-term stuff. This should be very, very strong. It's a bit like that silver at 22 level, very, very strong support. So if we do get, if we do go below 15, which could easily happen, seeing where the miners are and and seeing as they are following the markets and the markets have a long way down to go, you could easily get Pan American silver in the low 14s. But wow, that should be a serious buy. So I'm going to keep some dry powder for that. I'm very happy with Pan American silver. Resistance, $17, just below 17. Support, 15 to 15, 20, but also I would say 14, let's say 30-ish. Wheaton, quite good, actually, quite good. Obviously not the best candle. And looks like it wants to go lower. And if it does, then we've got 41. Just above 41 should be support. Uh, resistance, yeah, I mean, it's very simple stuff, right? 41 all the way up to 45, 46, let's say, resistance. Here, we're almost in the middle of the range. It looks like we want to go to the lower range with the miners. So once again, it's the miners, the GDX, the GDXJ sectors just dragging good stocks down. Mag Silver, this is a good one. I used to not like it, but... It's had good news recently, and it's a good bounce candle. Look at this bounce from the lows down here, just below 1050, all the way up, forced down with the sector. You know, it's what we saw with Pan American Silver, all the way up, forced down. And to be honest, I didn't even trade this move. I didn't even trade it. I bought, 
I bought a few miners a few weeks ago, pretty much at their lows. So I don't need to buy this again. And I have sold this already. So I'm looking for a breakout or breakdown before I trade again, I think. Max Silver, though, look at this close at low of day. If there's any continuation back down, we go to these 10, 30 lows. And who knows, we could crack it, even though it deserves to be higher and it's a good stock. It had good earnings and it's just forced down with the markets. Uh, it can go lower, even though it deserves to be higher. And then we're talking about nine. Wow, that's probably quite a good buy. But there's a lot of good, I mean, a lot of good stocks out there that are good buys already. So if we start to flush, I may not even buy Mag Silver. I may even buy some something else, like Nico, Newmont, who knows. Okay, Fortuna Silver. Here we go. So this one had bad news, dropped, bounced all the way back up to see the crime. So resistance again. Back down we go, up, down, up, down. Look at this close at low of day. What happens next? Well, depends on the sector, the dollar, the metals. But if the miners go down with the markets, then back down we test the lows, the sort of 1080 just below. We're almost there anyway. Next support, what do I have? I've got this here. Yes, totally makes sense. 1060. That could easily happen. That could easily happen. If, if the sector comes down, if silver just stops going up and the miners keep going down, or or who knows, gold, silver, and the miners go down, easily see Fortuna 1060 zone. We have a lot of good silver stocks that are at new lows, pretty much. So this wouldn't be asking too much. On the way up, well, we've got the same resistance, right? 320. I don't see us testing resistance unless there's a real mood or, I don't know, some trend change where the miners go up with the metals, like I said at the beginning. EXK, look at that. Worse off than Fortuna. Close at low of day. Close at that 10.50. Close below 10.50, actually. 10, sorry, 2.49. So close below 2.50. Closing below the low here. I mean, this is just, wow. EXK is a good stop too. Next stop. Two dollars. Wow. You know, step out of the way, let it go down, buy it cheaper. Don't buy it just because you already own it and you you hate seeing it where it is now, and therefore you'll buy some and you'll stop it from going down. No, no, no. This looks like it wants to go lower. And to be honest, if the miners if if the markets go lower and the miners are not changing their mind about following the markets, this could very quickly descend to a two dollar thing. So you want to have some ammunition. That would be a good buy and just to sell on the bounce. I mean, if that was to happen, I would buy and then I'd probably draw something like this. Look at this. Looks beautiful. That's a descending trend line to trade against on the way up. So imagine it starts to move down. Here, let's do it. It starts to move down. Down, 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 down to $2. Up it goes. 230 Okay, 229, 228, all out. That's how I would do that. But um, and then you've got something to look forward to, you know. It goes down, you look okay, you don't like it as it goes down, but as soon as you buy it and you can buy a nice amount of two, once it goes to 230, you're looking forward to selling and you want it to go back down again to trade it again. You can really trade out of positions very well. I've done that a lot, you know, and a stock that you really like that's gone down in the end, you get out in the money, even though it's like half the price from your first buy-in so it's it's uh, quite good sometimes to, to trade out of a position it's definitely doable but otherwise yeah close it low of day definitely looks like it can go lower i mean a lot weaker than than fortuna all right first majestic look at this one just like exk weaker even bearish look at that opens higher than the high Ooh, that was slow wasn't it we just had a pie in the balloon pop wow <laughs> Okay, big bearish engulfing candle here, 511, four tuna, I mean, first majestic. What a big stock. What an absolute travesty to watch it down here. This looks like it wants to go, well, straight to five. That will be done very quickly. Where's the next low? Well, it'll be this low from down here. It'll be 480 and even below, wow, 425, 420. I don't even know what that is. Can't believe that happening. So step out of the way, but this could really happen. I mean, especially the candle on Friday. I mean, this is with GDX and GDXJ not even down that much. You know, they weren't even down half a percent. And this is with gold up, silver up. Imagine you really have gold and silver going down. What if the DXY takes out 106 and, and the markets go down? And you've just got gold and silver getting slammed and then the miners are down 4%. What's happening to First Majestic? 
or first majestics will find itself at 460 or something so you know another silver stock i'm so happy i'm not too hard in these silver stocks and i'm rather focused on the seniors but i feel sorry for those that are really heavy in some of these but again first majestic just like exk looks like it wants to go lower very unfortunate stuff on the way up I mean, I don't really think you'd want to be selling here because if you're in a stock like this, you know it can go much higher. But resistance, oof, probably probably 550. Very small resistance. Otherwise, no, no. Clearly, 580 is the real first mini resistance if you had to sell. I wouldn't really be selling before unless it's a real quick day trade. You're buying lower than where it is now. So first Majestic EXK looks bad. Looks like it's going to go lower. Uh, CDE now this is one that we actually was already going this is my favorite one to buy on on bounce moves the day before it had a nice hammer and then pre-market was up yeah, CDE had a very good day right I mean up seven percent it was up sort of nine or ten percent I think at one point so very impressive I don't even know if there was news it may have just been technicals but maybe it's news some reiterated buy or something very small news um I think it's really, again, zoom out. It's a bit like CDE. and Sorry, it's a bit like AG First Majestic. It's got that long-term sort of ascending support, right? So they're pretty similar like that. EXK, a bit similar, but they're really, you know, these are really testing their lows. I know we've got a lot of miners out there testing their lows, but CDE is really breaching. I mean, look at this low here of $2. We're talking about, you know, the COVID lows. And that was just, I mean, look, we went from 2 to to 12 <clears throat> so look at the returns possible so i think that was some serious buying down here because it was absolute lows so is the low in well if the miners go lower if the dollar goes up if the metals go up this can easily return back to this this low two zone but this should be support you know it's not just going to go straight through it's going to find some strong buying again because this is some very strong buying here on this Thursday and follow up on Friday was extremely strong. So that's very good support. Low twos. After that, if we close below two, you'd have to look at this low from back there. What is that? 170 or something? Can't believe we're talking about that. That's you know, you you could just go in with like one or two thousand shares and honestly ride a massive trade all the way up. Um obviously a lot of things would have to happen there, but if silver and gold were to go up and you're in its CD around two or below with a couple thousand shares, that's retireable stuff. Okay, Discovery. This is such a shame. It had such a strong bounce. I remember, you know, here's your resistance at 70. It was obvious. I didn't even put a sell in. I was looking for more. I think I even said it in my last weekly video. I think it was actually up here. Yeah, Friday. Wow. I might even take a look at my last weekly portfolio update. What a difference a week makes. Look at this all the way back down again because of the market drop. It wasn't even gold or silver's fault. Gold and silver kind of were sideways, all things considered, even up to some degree. I think silver's even up, um, something like that. But it's definitely not because of gold and silver. This is purely the markets. That's why That's why you've got to you know be cognizant of, of, of where the market's going and the fact that the market can drag miners down and even though miners don't have much to do with it when when panic arises people can sell everything and people can sell things that are not supposed to be correlated so or maybe shorts are jumping on there are lots of reasons but the fact is your gold and silver stocks are going down because of the markets you know and not even because of the dollar that much actually i mean it should really be the dollar that's affecting the the, the miners more than the markets but actually it's the markets and last time the markets melt down it sent the miners up so you've just got to watch these trends. I'll finish off with GLG Go Gold, another one which screamed up, looked very nice by the Friday last last week, and now has retraced the whole move, well, not the whole move, but a decent amount of it. K92, this one actually has just been grinding sideways, so there's actually no difference in, in the last five trading days. But I think you see the, the trend, right? The trend is that the miners are very weak, some of them very, very weak, looking like they're making new 52 week lows and and some of them could make new all-time lows just because the market's going down and the market's got a long way down to go so what i'm thinking hoping but thinking is that the markets will continue to go down but they'll actually send gold and silver higher and we'll have a bit of a banking crisis and i think people will return to buying gold and silver 
uh, and the miners together. So the miners will start moving up with the metals. But at the moment, it's uh, not looking good. But this is where opportunity lies, of course. So don't go on margin. Don't do options. Don't do the juniors and the the extremely speculative ones. I would really focus on the top ones. There are others, of course, but go for the seniors that can weather these storms and actually make money every day. And therefore, these drops in prices are just serious opportunities. So high dividends, very nice, good senior established stocks with which I consider are very defensive, making money here and even below, uh, you know, if the metal prices go low, which they're not doing, by the way. So it's just a good opportunity. Um and elsewhere, the markets are getting destroyed. You know, some of these big stocks out there, they're starting to get taken out. So I might make another video on that. But that was just my portfolio for the miners. I hope you found that useful. Otherwise, have a good weekend.